Can you imagine a young woman killing young girls for the sake of sexual fantasies? Well, that's Rosemary West for you. Back in the 1960s and 70s, Rosemary along with her husband carried out some gruesome murders which left the entire community in shock. The most notorious killer after Myra Hindley, Rosemary West is considered one of the most famous serial killers in the United Kingdom. But what did she do to be remembered to this day? Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today, I am going to tell you all about Fred and Rosemary West and how they committed gruesome murders in their late 40s. So, make sure to sit back and stick with me till the end of the video so that you don't miss anything. Now, without any further ado, let's dive straight into it. Born on September 29, 1941, Fred was born to Walter Stephen and Daisy Hannah Hill. His parents used to be average farmers and Fred along with his siblings used to help them out with the finances. But he was evil since the beginning. The theft was deeply enrooted in him, and he also did not bother to clean himself. He never performed well at school and dropped out at the age of 15. But his childhood was disturbed as his mother was sexually. Him when he was just 12 years old. He was made to perform sexual acts with animals and whatnot. He also had two accidents and a plate was placed inside his brain. Maybe his state of mind might have been affected by it. But he didn't go unnoticed by the police in his teenage years. He had the habit of children and was even found guilty of impregnating a young 13-year-old girl. For that very reason, he was kicked out of his family home, and he later started working in construction, but again, he had to leave the job due to stealing from his employees. Though the police got to know him for his child, crimes, he met a girl named Rena Costello who was a prostitute. He married her in 1962, and they had a child together. But despite their marriage, his obsession with death didn't stop. After marriage, he started working as an ice cream truck driver, which allowed him to get in close contact with teenagers. After that, he moved to Gloucester, where he started working in the slaughterhouse, and that's where the real drama began. Fred and Rena had also met a friend named Anna McFall, and during his stay at Gloucester, eight assaults were reported, and we aren't surprised. But things weren't turning out to be good between Fred and Costello, so she moved back to her hometown while leaving her children with Fred and McFall, but little did she know that Fred would impregnate McFall as well. Now McFall had started urging Fred to leave Costello and marry her instead, but Fred had something else in mind. After a heated argument, Fred couldn't stop himself from killing McFall along with the unborn child, but there is something he did differently from other killers. He not only cut her toes, but fingers as well, which became his signature murder technique. He buried her near the caravan and started living normally. By now, Costello had also returned and they started living normally. But in January 1968, a girl named Mary Bastholm got abducted from a bus point and of course, Fred was involved. By now, he had also met Rose West, who would become his major murder accomplice. Born on November 29, 1953, West was born in Devon after a difficult pregnancy. But just like Fred, her childhood was also not great. Her father was a schizophrenic who used to be violent towards her mother. Though she moved out from his home along with her mother, but returned to her father only to suffer more emotional damage. It was during this time that she started seeing Fred, but her father was totally against it but she stood firm and even got pregnant with Fred's child. Now that she had to take care of three children after Fred got arrested for his petty crimes, things started to change for Rose. She started to grow more violent, and all her anger got directed at her children. She even killed Fred's eldest eight-year-old daughter and removed her fingers and toes just like Wes did. Now Wes was in jail while she moved the body to somewhere nearby. When West returned, he found out about the murder. A father knowing about the murder of his firstborn child must have left him devastated, but guess what? He congratulated Rose for carrying out the murder in a mysterious way and thought of her as his best partner. Now to spice things up, 
The mother of Fred's eldest daughter came to find her, but she didn't know that she was only going to meet her death. Fred and Rose not only strangulated her but also dismembered and cut her toes and fingers. They buried her where Anna McFall was buried and just like that, the spree of murders had started. Like the video so far. Then make sure to give this video a big thumbs up as a little action from you can help our channel grow immensely. Now let's get back to the video. In January 1972, Fred and Rose married each other secretly and shared another child named May. By then, they also moved to Cromwell Street. In order to pay rent, something had to be done so Rose became a prostitute while Fred continued his evil obsessions and made a torture chamber. Now I am about to tell you something pure evil and shocking, so sit tight. The first occupant of the torture chamber was no other than her very own second daughter, Anna Marie. Rose held her tightly while Fred tortured and her brutally. Now you must be wondering why Marie didn't tell anyone about this brutality. Well, the poor soul was threatened by her stepmother and father that if she told this to anyone, she would be killed. But things started to escalate greatly after that as Fred wanted to make other people out of his circle his victims. So, he hired a nanny named Caroline Owens who was imprisoned after a few days. Fred Owens but also threatened her that they would kill her if she let this little secret out. But Owens had made up her mind and didn't get scared. She escaped the house and told everything to the police. But Fred convinced the magistrate that it was Owens who wanted to perform the acts and she had totally given her consent. Now despite having a criminal record for years, the police were dumb enough to believe him and he was released with some fines. Now the cellar under 25 Cromwell Street had become the hiding point of the dismembered and bodies of Fred's victims. His victims include Linda Goff, Ioanni Tamat, and Thierry Siegenthaler. Not only that, but his list of victims also includes Allison Chambers and Shirley Robinson. Fred was cruel enough to even wrong the young 15-year-old schoolgirls named Carol and Cooper and Shirley Hubbard. Now Rose also gave birth to more children, but that didn't stop Fred from liking his own daughter sexually. When Anna Marie came of age, she left her house with her boyfriend. And now it was the time for poor May and Heather to become the target of their very own father. Though there was strict control over them, that didn't stop Heather from telling the activities happening in her house to other people at school. When Fred got to know about it, he dismembered and killed her right away. How can a parent kill his own child in cold blood? Well, that's Fred and Rose for you. On top of that, they also made her brother dig up the hole for her sister. In August 1992, Constable Hazel Savage sniffed the wrongdoings happening at Cromwell Street. He received the evidence of child and arrested Fred and her wife for the of the minor and. Now Savage started his investigation about the elder missing children of Fred, which include Heather, and even asked Anna Marie and their other siblings, but nobody proved to be of help. The case reached a dead end when the two key witnesses decided to step back. Now Savage was also unable to get any answers about where Heather was. So, for that, the house had to be searched again so a warrant was obtained to do so. When the garden and house were searched again the dismembered bodies were found buried in the garden. The first body which was identified was that of Shirley Robinson. Not only that, more than nine bodies followed and Fred accepted all these murders. On the other hand, Rose showed no interest and convinced the police that she knew no such happening. At this point, Rose tried to commit suicide, but his son Stephen found her and made sure to bring her back to life. Now that the police had found nine bodies, Fred also confessed to the murder of his wife, his lover, and two children and told them about their place of burial. The whole town was shocked to the core after listening to the details of the gruesome murder. On January 1, 1995, Fred was found guilty of 12 murders and was brought to the Green Prison in Birmingham. But of course, knowing that he will be sentenced to death at one point and living with the shame of killing 12 people was another thing. All of this caused Fred to hang himself and he did that with knotted bedsheets. Now coming to Rose West, 
she got a lot of media frenzy and appeared for her trial on October 3, 1995. Though she tried to testify herself, Anna Marie made sure to bring hell on her stepmother, and honestly, she deserved that. Anna Marie told how Rose accompanied her father during the sexual on young girls. She was found guilty of 10 murders and was sentenced to life without any possibility of parole. She launched appeals in 1996 and 2000, but none of them worked and she still stays in prison to this day. Well, do you think that the number of murders committed by Fred and Rose was more than 12? Let me know in the comments. With that being said, it's time for me to say goodbye but don't be sad as I will be back with another amazing video soon. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe and bell icon buttons so that you don't miss any updates from my channel. See you all soon. Thanks for watching.